Today we're making the crispiest, crunchiest oh. egg rolls ever. A recipe my dad's perfected thousands of times. Also known as so Thai chun gun, or literally spring rolls. It's a curious story how people started calling these egg rolls since there are no eggs to be found in the wrapper or filling. We'll get to that later along with our sponsor, Shaker and Spoon. But first, my dad will teach us how a Chinese chef prepares the secret ingredients for this recipe. This is is for the dried shiitake mushrooms, my dad rehydrates them by soaking them in hot water for around 10 to 15 minutes. We'll also rehydrate some clear ear fungus in the same way, and it'll look like this once rehydrated. We'll set the rehydrated vermicelli aside to drain, and now my dad will show you how he chops everything down for the filling. With this amount of ingredients, we'll be making 20 egg rolls today. We'll cut out the hard stalk of the cabbage with two angled cuts. Then we'll stack all the leaves and start to chop it into fine strips. We'll bunch up the clatter fungus and chop into similarly sized strips. We'll use the same technique to cut our shiitake mushrooms into strips. We'll first cut the celery into two inch segments. We're using regular celery here, but you can also use Chinese celery for an extra kick of flavor. Then we'll turn them perpendicular and chop them into strips. We'll chop these snow peas into strips just like our previous ingredients. Our recipe today is fully plant-based, but like my dad said, you're free to add whatever you like to the filling as long as it's not too wet, and he'll explain why later. Now here's a pro tip for my dad for cutting carrots safely. With already cut 2 inch segments of carrot, we'll first cut it into thin slices. Then we'll lay them down and cut into strips like the rest of the ingredients. Now we'll roughly mince 3 cloves of garlic. Now my dad will create the glue that will seal our spring rolls later by combining two tablespoons of flour and two tablespoons of water. We have all of these ingredients listed on our blog at madewithlao.com, along with step-by-step -step instructions and video clips to guide you as you make the recipe at home. Now my dad will walk us through how to cook the juiciest filling. We'll heat the wok on high until it's hot or about a minute. Then we'll add one tablespoon of oil. We'll spread the oil around the wok for around 30 to 40 seconds, then add garlic. After cooking the mushrooms for about 20 to 30 seconds, we'll add the celery. Then we'll follow quickly with the cabbage. After adding each ingredient, we'll mix them thoroughly in the wok. Now after around 30 seconds of cooking the cabbage, we'll add our next ingredient. We'll also add the cloud ear fungus here. With scissors, we'll cut the vermicelli a few times to make it easier to cook and wrap. 
After a quick mix of about 30 to 40 seconds, we're ready to add some seasoning. We'll mix in our seasoning well, then add our final ingredients. We'll make a small hole in our ingredients for the vermicelli. We'll add the vermicelli to the hole and mix it around the bottom of the wok to soak up any moisture from the veggies. Then we'll cover the vermicelli with the veggies and mix it in well. We'll add a tablespoon of sesame oil here. We'll stir fry for a final 30 to 40 seconds here to make sure it's mixed well. Today's sponsor is my new favorite subscription box, Shaker and Spoon, which delivers a craft cocktail experience right to your door. Each month, you'll get a box of three original recipes created by world-class bartenders and enough ingredients for 12 cocktails, four from each recipe. You supply just one bottle of your favorite liquor, and they provide the perfect amount of syrups, bitters, aromatics, and other ingredients that I personally never would have thought to buy on my own. They have a bunch of monthly themes to pick from, and we got the Añejo Let's Go box because I love tequila and mezcal drinks. The drink I'm making here is called the Tijuana Brass, which is a fresh take on a tequila old fashioned. We're mixing two and a half ounces of tequila añejo, which I swapped with my favorite mezcal, a half ounce of cinnamon de marara syrup, a dash of aromatic bitters, and some ice. Mix with a bar spoon or a chopstick if you're like me until the glass feels cold. The recipe calls for serving with large coconut water ice cubes, but I don't have a large ice spray on hand, so I just use normal ice. We'll finish with a few sprays of orange oil. This is significantly fancier than any cocktail I've ever made at home, and even with my substitutions, this was just as good if not better than a lot of drinks I get out at cocktail bars. Also, my dad, one of the toughest critics I know, was genuinely impressed by the taste. If this sounds like it's up your alley, click the link in our description and use code MADEWITHLAO at checkout or go to shakerandspoon.com slash MADEWITHLAO for $20 off your first box of awesome craft cocktails delivered right to your door. How do you prevent mushy filling? The fancy cup side, the fungal, the why are these called egg rolls if there are no eggs in them? In Cantonese, these are called chungun, which means spring rolls, as in the season. In the US, egg roll and spring roll are basically used interchangeably, but they're actually different. Spring rolls have a long history in Chinese cuisine, with the earliest versions dating back to the Tang Dynasty in southern China. Like many Chinese dishes brought over by immigrants, spring rolls evolved and became what we know as egg rolls. The name is a bit of a mystery, but one theory is that the name of a similar dish was published in an English cookbook in 1917, and it was then later applied to the American version of the spring roll. Egg rolls are generally larger and have thicker skin than spring rolls and ironically don't have any egg in the recipe. Of course, there are many different versions of spring rolls in Asia and around the world, which just shows how amazingly adaptable they are. Today we're making this smaller, traditional Cantonese-style roll with thinner skin, so we should call this a spring roll. The ham is to make wrapping easier, we'll carefully separate each wrapper one at a time and make a loose stack. We'll only separate the amount we need. Yeah, 
With the wrapper in front of us like a diamond, we'll put about two tablespoons of filling on the closer half. At the halfway point, we'll crease and fold in the sides of the wrapper. We'll put a bit of the flour and water glue on the top corner of the wrapper. Then continue rolling and it should seal at the end. Why are some egg rolls bumpy? Before you start wrapping, do you ever have to drain the veggies? If you squeeze out the water. If you out the water. water. Then Sometimes, if you don't do it right, it's really, really loose inside. Mm. And then after deep fry, it doesn't look good. Now with the wrapping done, my dad will teach us how to deep fry the spring rolls into the crispiest golden creations. We'll turn the heat to high and add our oil to the pot. We're adding about three cups of oil here. When the oil reaches around 330 degrees Fahrenheit, we'll turn our heat to low and add in our spring rolls. We'll put in six at a time to not overcrowd the pot. We'll move and flip them around so they fry evenly. How do you prevent them from exploding? After about a minute and a half of frying on low, we'll turn the heat to high. This higher heat fry is meant to crisp up the outside and get that beautiful golden color. I also wanted to make a special shout out to thank all of our wonderful Patreon supporters for helping bring this video to life. If you enjoy our videos and are interested in supporting us directly, head on over to patreon.com slash madewithlao to learn more. My egg rolls tend to stay pale even after frying them for 20 minutes. What am I doing wrong? Huh? They're not pale. 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 After another minute and a half of frying on a high heat and when they're a golden color, we're ready to take them out. My dad is saying that the residual heat from the oil will continue to cook the wrapper, so there's no need to fry for too long. Turning the heat to low again, we'll put in the next batch. If you need to lower the overall oil temperature quickly, you can also throw in a few more egg rolls. 
Four people asked, how do you keep them crispy? You 就算擺咗內擺個嘢，佢都唔脆噶啦。而家啲皮仲未濕，佢咪脆咯。同埋呢只皮，呢只皮又係好好好名牌皮嚟嘅。If you want to keep the chicken very、really、crunch, eat right away. But at home, if you have an air fry, the skin still probably still not like original. Yeah, just come out from the, the deep fry, but still tastes good. Close enough. Better than、yeah. microwave. Yeah, 而家咪開翻猛火嘅咯，係嘛？點樣知你係炸太耐啊？你睇到色變，你已經轉曬色，咪黃色咪得啦嘛嚇！睇到呢啲咪色咪好靚啦，係嘛？ As we remove them from the oil, my dad likes to let the oil drain in the spider strainer before putting them on a plate. Okay， 搞掂啦，仲好清嘅咧，啲油炸完都唔啲油啲黃好靚。What do you do with leftover oil? 平時我嚟煮餸，係咁倒翻出嚟嘅。如果係咩，就俾佢油夾一夾啲嗰啲渣得噶啦嘛。You use the container easy to clean. Most of the time we use the china and then also the glass one. Do you ever like funnel it back into the bottle? 可以攞個。你要咁做咪咁做咯。不過要凍嗰先得。In the restaurant, our customer sit down. Yeah. Most of the time, the first dish is egg roll. 嗯。Then bring the appetizer. 嗯嗯。出完卷就係好多啦，希望大家中意。红多系咩啊？切！ That is a good crunch. 嗯，切！切切切切切！切！ Is yeah yeah the best? Number one. Yeah yeah number one. Okay. YouTube thinks you'll like this recipe next. Let's see if they're right.